My name is Aaron Gerds, and I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Ash Clinical News. I'm here today with Dr. Al Samkari, who was part of a large group that looked at a new treatment for pyruvate kinase deficiency and presented a very exciting abstract here at the annual meeting. So, Dr. Al Samkari, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I read your abstract with great intent. It was a wonderful uh, presentation to uh, the other day. And, you know, my first question is, you know, we may have all treated some pyruvate kinase when we were residents or fellows, but I think most of us have forgotten about it. Um, so how does this drug work in pyruvate kinase deficiency? Well, first of all, Dr. Gertz, thank you for the invitation to chat with you today about this important topic. Um, and I do want to acknowledge uh, my co-author, Dr. Rachel Grace, uh, who presented the abstract and all of our uh, uh, collaborators on this work. Um, so pyruvate kinase deficiency, uh, rare hereditary hemolytic anemia, um, uh, due to uh, really a, a deficiency of ATP in red cells. Uh, and this deficiency is uh, due to uh, inadequate pyruvate kinase enzyme activity. Harken back to biochemistry and, and uh, med school and, and uh, you know, uh, college with me for just a minute. And remember that glycolytic pathway, pyruvate kinase, the last enzyme in that pathway generates ATP. Red cells cannot uh, generate uh, energy via aerobic respiration, so very dependent on that ATP generation from, from glycolysis. And so when you have a deficiency of PK, you have energy deficiency, you get a chronic hemolytic anemia in red cells. This drug, midipivat, is an allosteric activator of pyruvate kinase. So it really revs up the pyruvate kinase enzyme. It can rev up both uh, uh, wild-type pyruvate kinase as well as a whole host of mutant pyruvate kinase enzymes. Not every mutant pyruvate kinase enzyme, but a whole host of mutant pyruvate kinase enzymes. So, uh, you know, the drug really uh, uh, addresses this energy deficiency. It, it really increases ATP production in red cells, thereby ameliorating the defect, reducing hemolysis and improving anemia. So in your abstract, you presented a, a large swath of data what, what type of patients were included in your analysis? Were these patients who had very severe disease or less severe disease or older or younger? So this is a great question. Um, uh, just about all the patients included in the study had moderate to severe disease. Mm -hmm. um, some of them came from the ACTIVATE study, which was a pivotal phase three randomized controlled study of patients who were not regularly transfused. And others came from the ACTIVATE-T study of patients who were regularly transfused. Uh, but patients, regardless of whether they're regularly transfused or not, uh, in both studies had a rather significant burden of disease at baseline. So uh, what was kind of the main finding of your presentation? You know, how well does this agent work in the population that you studied? That's a great question. So um, uh, Minipivat uh, works, in, based on the, the results of our studies, it, it works in about half of patients with pyruvate kinase deficiency deficiency to substantially improve hemoglobin and reduce hemolytic anemia. Um, and, and in those patients for whom the drug works, uh, it often works rather dramatically well. So uh, patients might live their whole entire life at a hemoglobin of eight or nine and then get on this drug and their hemoglobin is normal for the first time ever, uh, uh, which is really remarkable um, uh, and, and certainly uh, very uh, life-changing for a number of our patients. Um, it improves uh, markers of hemolysis, as you would imagine, along with that, uh, uh, makes jaundice go away. Um, and, and with normalization of hemoglobin or improvement of hemoglobin, patients have uh, far fewer symptoms of anemia. They're able to you know, work full-time jobs again. They're able to concentrate at school. Um, and so it, 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 it's really, it really can be, uh, uh, you know, it's, it, the, what we have observed uh, uh, with use of the drug has been really um, quite impressive for lots of our patients. Wow, fantastic. It sounds like such a huge improvement in patients' quality of life. Absolutely. In some of the press readings and clippings that I've seen about this agent, you know, it's mentioned that this is quote unquote disease modifying. As a myeloid disorders kind of guy, that means like you've killed off a bunch of cancer cells. So how is this disease modifying for PKD? That's a great question. So, you know, we have uh, two main pillars of uh, uh, disease manifestations in PKD. We have the symptoms of anemia and the consequences of anemia. And then we have all the consequences of hemolysis. And when one has a hemolytic anemia throughout their entire life, the, the, the latter issues can really build up over time, iron overload, reduced bone mineral density, development of osteopenia, osteoporosis, endocrinopathies, I mean, the, the list goes on. Um, and, you know, one of the things that we see in, uh, uh, in some of the data that we're presenting at ASH this year 
um, is that the, not only does the agent improve the anemia and all of those immediate issues, but it also really does appear to uh, help arrest bone loss in patients with pyruvate kinase deficiency. It um, uh, uh, may put patients in a, a negative iron balance. There's another abstract uh, presented by one of my colleagues that shows that the, uh, uh, the iron parameters in these patients actually improve. And this is something, I mean, iron overload takes decades to develop. It's gonna take some time to really see uh, a, you know, a dramatic improvement, but even with just you know, the, the amount of data we have, you know, a year, two years, we're starting to see this improvement. And, and so you know, we're really excited uh, about that. And, and when we say disease modifying, we know that if we're able to really shut down hemolysis and hemolytic anemia, that we really should be able to not just make them feel better in the moment, but improve things for the long term. That's amazing. Yeah, we're always striving not only to improve the people's quantity of life, but quality of life too. And this really seems like a way of doing both. Yeah, I mean, uh, we've been really, uh, uh, really enthusiastic and, and uh, the responses that we've seen in these clinical trials have been really remarkable for a lot of our patients. And very importantly, you know, a drug can be effective, but not well tolerated. This drug is, you know, in the, the randomized study, very well tolerated, you know, compared to placebo, the safety profile was relatively similar. Yeah. Um, no patients reduced their dose or discontinued treatment for um, uh, side effects, um, uh, which is, you know, that's, that's, you can't get any better than zero yeah. patients uh, yeah. uh, doing it. So um, we're, we're excited for that perspective too. It's rare to see a trial do that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing your insight about your abstract. I really enjoyed reading it. Uh, if you would like to read the abstract, it is uh, in the Blood Journal. You can search for it there, as well as our coverage through Ash Clinical News. Well, thanks again so much for joining me today, and uh, thanks for you to, for watching.